I'm on a journey to become the best cook that I can be. Along this journey, I've met with pitmasters and chefs from Miami, Florida, all the way to New York City, from Los Angeles, California, all the way to Toronto, Canada, and all over the great state of Texas. I've been in Austin, Lockhart, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, and today I'm in Montgomery, Texas, the birthplace of the Texas flag, and more importantly, what just might be the best new barbecue in the whole state of Texas, Barre Barbecue, where you and I are gonna learn from pitmaster Cooper Abercrombie and his family and team, what makes Barre Barbecue so special. Hey Cooper. What's up Al, how are you buddy? Doing great. Good man, come on in, about to cut a tray for the day. Oh, perfect. So what should we try first? Always start with the pork ribs. All right. I'll let you go first since you're the guest. Well, look at this. You've got a lot of good smoke on this. So the best pork rib I've tasted so far has been at Goldie's. Let's see how we compare. There's yours, Caleb. Mm. I get two totally different flavor profiles. I get the pork and the seasoning, but then I get the glaze as a totally separate experience. Is there something about the way that you glaze that makes these taste so different? No, I mean, we just, we cook them till they're done and then we pull them and wrap them and sauce them with a the glaze and they get wrapped and go into service. Awesome, and you're gonna teach me these later, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Awesome, what are we doing next? Always go turkey is my, my second one. Turkey's not my favorite, I'll tell you. Thanks, Caleb. Okay, this is different. This is super juicy. Like All right, people that know me know I don't eat white meat and I'm like sitting here eating this. And there's a lot of flavor here. So we're gonna learn this too? Absolutely. And buddy. you're gonna tell me the secret. You, I'm gonna I'll be give able you to do all this. the secrets, all the dirty secrets. All right, what's next? Well, it's the weekends, so it's beef rib day. So you're lucky you came on a weekend day, so you get to try out a beef rib. All right, beef so. rib's my favorite barbecue. It's I know we're in favorite. Texas, it's, it's supposed to, to be cook. brisket. <laughs> just pick it up and eat it. All right? Okay, we just, we just, we just passed the. That boy. All right, Caleb, let's see your bite. Cooper. All right, now you guys got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no shame. I uh, save the best. Cooper class. and I got the uh, flavor savers here, so we get to taste <laughs> oh, beef yeah. rib a little later. Yeah. That's the juiciest beef rib I've ever had. Super moist. And it's got more smoke on it than you usually get on a beef rib. Is this like a super long smoke? We do a cold smoke process. We'll definitely teach you our cold smoke process on these. We got All one right, and then I see brisket in there. You got to try the brisket. All right, burn, burn, burn ends. ends. Little right. burn ends. One for everybody. Oh, okay, everybody's got a burn end. Good stuff. Wow. So the same thing. This is more smoke, even than folks that smoke, you know, twelve-hour briskets. Is this a cold smoke too? We do. We cold smoke the briskets. It's a nice smoky color or flavor to it. Nice color on there. But you're right. I'm gonna try cold smoking too. Well, it's cool because we'll do a mini brisket with the beef ribs. So brisket on a stick. There right you on, go. Right? <laughs> So post oak is a really mild wood. So you get smoke flavor, you get a bark, everybody down here, but this has got more. I taste the smoke on the surface, but it's not overwhelming like the rest of the brisket. It's really impressive. I can see why you guys are on yeah. that list. And like I All said, right. you, gotta hit the, you gotta hit the sweets. You gotta, right. you gotta hit the cookie. I've already sampled a cookie coming out of the oven, so you get this one. All right. We, gonna... we won't even make you share. Really? I won't make you oh, share. I, mean, I haven't had one today yet. <laughs> All right, all right. You get, you get <laughs> like, all right, I'm sharing yourself. with you. All right. Chocolate chip, oatmeal, meat. Mm -hmm. Lots of How do I taste tallow. meat? The tallow. You're using tallow in here. Yep. This is so. This is a cookie a carnivore can eat. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And there's no carbs, right? This is zero, zero, carb, zero carb, totally it's healthy. Totally healthy. <laughs> All right. So they're teaching me how to make the proteins. Will you teach me how to make the cookies? I got you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Dude, this is awesome. All right. So I know you guys are going to start service. Let's get some folks served and then I guess meet in the kitchen and we'll start working on prep. We'll see you soon. All right, awesome. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, guys. I'm uh, Caleb Abercrombie. I'm Cooper's younger brother. I, I am Coach Abercrombie, go by Coach Abercrombie, and I, I am Cooper and Caleb's father, as far as we know. We never had a blood test, but we just went with the assumption. This probably started, I guess, maybe about two or three years ago. Cooper was kind of starting to get into the pop-up side of barbecue. When Cooper told me he wanted to open up a restaurant, 
Uh, it was kind of just out of the blue. I just never saw him going that way. Being the younger brother, family member, it was kind of one of them deals, pop-ups, you know, you basically call everybody to, uh, to come help, and uh, I was always usually the first phone call. When he decided he wanted to try the restaurant business, I said, go for it. You know, he, him and they, both the boys are, are those kind of kids that uh, uh, when, they, when they get something in their head, they want to be the best at it. Very proud, I'm proud of both of them. Both good boys, uh, and uh, they got my support. Nice cutting board we got here. Yeah, nice red cutting board. It's like that red hair you got. So, well, red hair I had. Whoa! It's gone. Look at this guy. <laughs> nice and shiny, man. Love it. Big reveal for everybody. No more red hair. Let's get to cooking. What are we cooking first? First, I'm gonna prep our pork ribs. These are a pretty quick, easy trim for us. We try not take a whole lot off. We don't have to. Right. So you know, we uh, we learned how to do pork ribs. Uh, actually, Jalen up at uh, Goldie's taught us that. How different is your process from what we've seen there? We probably trim more than they do. We're pretty simple though. We take chine bone off, square up our edges, and then we're just shaping our uh, sharp corners after that. And then we take the flap off. Okay. So everybody on YouTube says you got to remove the membrane. Jalen said, don't bother with your philosophy. No, when you cook 36, 40 racks of ribs on a Saturday, I'm not spending two hours taking membranes off. Top, I'm just making a nice straight cut. I like to make straight lines and then round corners. And the fact that you're taking a little bit more off than, uh, than others do doesn't bother you because it's going into sausage. Again, yeah, everything we use here is going back into the sausage, yeah. so it's all good. But there's right. a trim rack there. It's nice and easy. Okay. Pretty. Perfect. There's one rack. Okay, Creekstone Farm beef ribs. Yep, Creekstone Farms, like I said, it, we found it's just the most consistent product we can get our hands on. So I've seen folks trim silver skin off of here, take fat off the cap. Is there a yeah, lot you do I mean, before they go in? Not really. If there's like, we'll take a little bit of this stuff off, but right. that's my only, my only uh, wish list is that they leave a little bit of fat on top of these things for us. But you can see the marbling on Oh my goodness. Those great stone beef ribs, I mean. That's crazy. So were we working with choice prime beef? These are all upper two thirds choice from okay. Creekstone, which honestly is better than most people's prime products yeah, out there. Yeah, that looks fantastic. Yeah. So outside of that, that's really all I'm gonna do these things. They're gonna get hit pretty high with a lot of heat. So none of that's gonna be noticeable once you get it on the pit out there. So that'll just crisp up and yeah, yeah. it's not gonna block the flavor. Yeah. Okay. We'll pull them off uh, later. I might take a little bit of my corners off, just kind of round those edges out. Right. And that's it for the trim, huh? That's it for the trim. Okay. All right, so when I went to Goldie's, I was excited to learn about brisket, but after I tasted the tray, the ribs were the thing I was most excited about, and Jalen taught me how to do those, and they were crazy. And I gotta tell you, I came down here excited about your beef ribs, everything I've heard, but then when I tasted this turkey, I don't know how you make a turkey as delicious and juicy and wonderful as this one, so I'm excited about the rest of the stuff, but believe it or not, I can't believe I'm saying this, the turkey might be the thing I'm most it's, excited to learn. what we tell everybody, like, when they come in, they're like, what should we get? I'm like, the turkey. Like, A, order the brisket, because we got a lot of it, we got to sell it. But <laughs> the turkey is, is what you should definitely put on the plate. And oftentimes, we'll, we'll give out bites of turkey. They're like, eh. I'm like, look, I'll put a quarter pound on your tray. Don't worry about it. I promise you'll come back and order some more next time. Wow. And nine times out of 10, they're like, yeah, no, that was incredible. I mean, I can tell you, like when I picked up that piece of turkey, I mean, you saw I'm like ready for something dry, but it wasn't just glistening because there was butter. It was like all the way through. So yeah. how, how do we do that? Is there a trim? There is no trim. We're very fortunate. We get boneless, skinless turkey breast uh, straight from our meat provider. Okay. Um, there's two to a pack. This is one of them. They come in just like this. All right, so seasoning. So what's the super secret seasoning formula? 16 mesh black pepper, Fiesta. You get it at any local store here in right. Texas. Right. Uh, and then we use diamond crystal kosher salt. We just find it's just a little bit simpler rub, simpler rib. Uh, we will finish our ribs with our rib glaze we make as well. So okay. uh, really we're just trying to make sure that we have enough pepper to get the color we want on right. the pork ribs and that our salt level's correct. 
So okay. outside of that, that's all we put on these ribs. So there's no seasoned salt. There's no special here. No, is... the uh, the secret to the ribs is the rib glaze. I think that's I think that's what really sets our ribs off. Okay. Is, uh, that, that all right, I can't wait to learn that. All right, so it's again we're doing pepper first. Pepper first. Oh, a real light coat. Okay. And then we'll go with our kosher salt. So where'd you learn all this? To come out of the womb, talented cook? I wish, man. <laughs> I, uh, I've been very fortunate to make a lot of friends in the barbecue world and a lot of guys that answered my questions when I was bugging them in their DMs. And, you know, Johnny and those guys at, at Goldie's and Lane and Jalen and everybody over there, you know, and now Amir at Redbird and you got Chuck uh, down there at Barb's. At bar right. I could spend a whole day just listing off the people that have helped me in this barbecue world. Yeah. That's why I always tell everyone, like, we don't have any secrets because, man, I, you know, I wouldn't be here without everybody else's help that they've given me. Yeah. So if you're willing to come here and work and spend time and, and hang out with us, we'll teach you whatever you want to know. I'll tell you, this is my favorite part of my job of doing this on YouTube. I love cooking and I love eating my barbecue, but being able to hang out with guys like you, the time I spent at Goldie's, the time I spent with Blacks, and right in New York City learning to make pastrami. It's made me a heck of a better cook. You got a cool job, dude. Pretty cool. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Pork ribs, yeah. salt and pepper, man. Not it's, a lot. It's, yeah. it's nice and simple, you know? Okay. Little different, but basically still very simple ingredients, it looks like. Very similar, 16 mesh black pepper again, and this time we just use the Fiesta seasoning salt. So, so both no, of them you pick up at any store, anyone can get their hands on it. We do do it separately. Um, just because we do like to be able to adjust salt levels if needed. Right. Um, cause we do try our food every day. So like we'll come in, we'll try everything. And if something's under salted, over salted, it's easy to go back and say, Hey, we just need to put more or put less versus right. mixing the two and the salt might settle in the bottle. So then you can't really go back and adjust your ratios that easy. Okay, so there's no big secret to seasoning. This is anybody can get this stuff. Anyone can get it, anyone can do it. Your seasoning principles just boil down to how dark do you want the protein you're cooking to be. Right. You know, more pepper, the darker it's gonna be. Less pepper, the more red it's gonna be. Right. So it's what tone are you looking for? In Texas, we like, we're known for the big, dark, thick, peppery right. bark. Right. So we go pretty heavy on the pepper. So binder? No, I don't see a water bottle no, in your this, hand. No, this just came out, so they're still pretty wet, tacky. Right. We're pretty good here. Okay, now you're putting pepper on first. I see a lot so of we'll go pepper first. first. In my opinion, if you do the salt first, the pepper has a hard time sticking. Okay. So we go the big pepper first, then let the salt come in, penetrate, and kind of all come together as it, as it draws that moisture out of the protein. The back side, we're not super worried about. Right. Because, yeah, no one's eating the back side of a beef rib. That's just weird. So this is just getting flavor. Yeah. And then they're more, the most important side, our presentation right. side. So we're going to go pretty pretty liberal with the pepper. Is there such a thing as too much pepper on yes. a big piece like this? Too much pepper can definitely cause it to flake off on the pit. You need to leave enough space to put your seasoning salt on the top of this. Right. Well, you've got a nice even coat there. So we're not measuring anymore. We just look no. at it, we know. We just shake the wrist and we feel it. Yeah. Okay. But there you go. Those are two seasoned beef ribs. Beautiful. Very beautiful. Can't wait to taste you. They're pretty easy. Again, it's, we go pepper first, like everything. Right. And then we hit it with our Fiesta Seasonal. So this right is- the top. This is the same season flavor profile as we did for the beef ribs. Same as the beef ribs, same as the brisket. There's just a lot of good yummy spices in this uh, Fiesta season all. So again, nice, even right. presentation side. So we'll spend a little bit, kind of make sure we really make this thing look pretty nice and even. Perfect. And, then and that's we it. Will, uh, We're just taking it out of the package. It's pepper. nice and seasoned. We'll take it on the pit. We'll kind of roll it over, fold it, and make it look nice and pretty on the pit, just like that. And that'll be how we cook it. And it'll come out looking just like that. There's got to be more to this to make it as delicious as what you serve me. Keep it simple, man. I think, think barbecue, keep it simple. I think people overcomplicate it. This is not that hard. I think we overthink all this stuff. Get, you, get, your, uh, get your salt right and get your color and you're good to go. Okay, so we've got beef ribs, pork ribs, turkey, two of them trimmed, everything seasoned. What are we doing next? 
So we are essentially done for now. We'll see y'all back here tonight when we get everything on the pit. I just want to take a minute and talk about my experience down here because it's been kind of extraordinary. Got here a couple of days ago and got to meet the team here, got to spend some time around the town, and this isn't something that I've seen a lot of. Maybe part of it is because I'm a New Yorker who lived in New York and Chicago and lives in Raleigh, other big cities, and Montgomery is a unique place, but I, I feel like there's more to the story here. I, let me start by talking about the group here at Bar A. Cooper is a natural leader. Not in the, oh my goodness, he's gonna be a huge CEO kind of way, but people flock to him because he cares about the quality, he cares about the customers, he cares about the food, and because he's self-taught, he has a humility about him that you just don't see elsewhere in the barbecue community. This is a guy who seven or eight years ago was us. He bought a Traeger, he cooked his first brisket. It sucked, just like all of our first briskets. And he committed himself to learning how to be an amazing pit master, and he did what we do. He paid attention to what people were saying, he reached out to folks like I do, and got to go and learn at Goldie's and some of the other places and like work with them to try to learn and he got to the point where his food truck was so successful that he was able to parlay it into opening this place literally just a year ago we're three weeks off of them celebrating their one year anniversary and the community came together like his wife is here, his brother is here, his dad comes in and does dishes. He's got two customers who were such big fans that they ended up joining the team and working. And everybody that we've met here will follow this man because he does it and he does it himself. He's here at three o'clock in the morning shoveling coals and stacking fires and checking meat. He makes sure that every single piece of meat that comes off of these pits is a Cooper representative piece of meat. I gotta tell you, watching this team operate is super impressive. It's not just the people that work here that follow him though. The whole community turns out and supports each other. And that made me think a lot about what this little town of Montgomery, Texas is all about. Look, I'm a big city guy, but I spent a lot of time in small towns, especially in the barbecue business. And this place is different. I watch as Cooper interacts with other small business owners here who come out to support him and how he makes a point of going out and supporting them. Everybody here made us feel welcome in a way that you just don't get and you feel like, okay, I'm an hour away from Houston, I'm somewhere in the suburbs, but this doesn't feel like a suburban place, it doesn't feel like part of a big city, and it doesn't feel like a tiny rinky-dink town either. This is a community and it's a community that I think is thriving and really supporting each other. And I think that's part of why Bar A is possible. Uh, I don't think you're gonna find this in a lot of small towns and you're certainly not gonna find this in a lot of big cities. I really hope that we see these guys thrive and succeed. And I got a feeling that when that next top 50 list comes out, we're gonna see these guys very, very high on that list. You might even be sitting at the next number one barbecue spot in Texas. We're loading the pit with all the big proteins right now. We always try and put the smallest of those proteins near the stack and we progressively get bigger. We also try and always put that fatty protective side on that point. You always wanna put that towards the wall or towards the door, or we'll load the door first, then go to the wall. Just cause that's where most of your heat's gonna collect, your residual heat coming off the metal. On these things is that true on smaller backyard smokers too or is absolutely. that absolutely uh, yeah. i think i think the smaller the pit the more important that is so having enough fat protection and having it in the right spot so the whole point towards the fire isn't as important as the fat towards the hot spot on the side I, I mean i'm always a believer in just the principle of just making sure you have fat from wherever the nearest point of residual heat's coming from. So if Got it's it. a, a direct heat pit or whatever, you might want to cook fat side down. Right. You know, the most important part, like I need them to be the most careful with is that point side of the brisket. Cause A, this side right here underneath here, that's those burn in pieces that everybody wants. Right. You know, in Texas, we don't sell burn ins. We give them away here, but there's like three on every brisket and they're about that big. Right. That first slice on the point is coming from right here. So A, we gotta make sure that we don't scalp that so we have fat on there because the fat is flavor, fat is moisture. If you're gonna be ultra protective when you trim, be ultra protective there. You don't obviously don't wanna scalp anything, but 
scalping on the top of the lean or whatever is not that big of a deal. Like at the end of the cook, you're never gonna know you scalp that lean. Yeah. But now we'll place them on, we kind of pat them in again, cause however it sits, is how it's gonna cook over the course of that, that cook. Right. So if you've got little pointy edges and stuff, now's the time to try and pat those in. You find the smaller briskets I think they cook, they cook more even. They cook more evenly. They cook better. They render better. Right. Like, if I was telling any backyard guy cooking their first brisket, like, don't go buy a 20-pound monstrosity because it's got a, it's on sale or whatever. There's a reason it's on sale because those right. guys know this one sucks. So, <laughs> uh, find you, like, a nice 10-pound smaller guy. You're going to trim it. It's going to be, like, eight when you're done trimming it, four when you're done cooking it. Like, it's going to cook even, cook quickly. It's going to be a good brisket. No. These beef ribs. Again, these are Creekstone Farms beef ribs, but we're loading all these up tonight. <clears throat> we're gonna cold smoke these overnight, which I, I say cold smoking is between like 150 and 200, 215, somewhere around there. We're gonna keep the dampers and doors really, really shut, put a ton of smoke on these. Right. Get a lot of color. It's gonna really help set the bark so when we do hit the stall and this protein tightens up and pushes out moisture, it's not gonna wash away any of the seasoning we've put on them. You know, there's a couple like core principles within these big protein cooks. More pepper is more color. The right. darker the color, the more pepper, the darker the product. The more smoke, the darker the product. Now there's right. a point where you can't over smoke stuff, you know. Right. Once we get here in the morning, we're pretty much done smoking these things. It's pretty much time to just start rendering fat and getting these things finished. So no, we don't have a fire going yet. No, right? there's nothing in the firebox right now. All the YouTubers talk about clean smoke and dirty smoke and get your smoke clean before you're putting the protein on and that's not a thing here. Go look at their finished product and tell me which one you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we light the fire. So stack is wide open at this point for cold smoke. We're gonna get it probably 90, 95% shut. We're gonna keep this thing really, really shut down. Okay. And then we'll light our fire. We're gonna build what we call a bundle fire, what Lane and Johnny call a bundle fire as well. They're the ones who taught me this stuff, but essentially we're gonna take the logs and just probably put like four of them real tight, just like this together. Right. We're gonna make it really, really hard for this thing to breathe. It's gonna, it's gonna A, the syntax is so efficient, it's gonna pull. Right. Uh, it's gonna keep a flame, but it's gonna make it really smoky, really slow, slow flames. Right. Um, keeping stuff super chill and nice on the pit. So we're looking for splits that have good flat sides so you can put them together, limit airflow. Yeah, the okay. flatter, the better they fit together, the better they cold smoke. Got it. And you for get, a thousand you, gallon, we'll probably put like seven-ish splits in here. Right. Tonight. I wouldn't go and put eight splits on your backyard smoker, but. Right. Yep, so that's lit. We'll come in, we'll keep the intakes <clears throat> pretty shut too. And then usually we hang out for like 20 minutes and play Madden just to make sure like there's still a flame before we leave. Okay. It's three o'clock in the morning and uh, what's natural for him is not natural for me because we're up and we're here for the day. So uh, what are we up to? For, oh my goodness, look at that. All right, what's our, what's our plan for so our 3 a.m. session? Uh, here's our product after we cold smoked overnight. We're gonna move them a little bit closer to the heat source. Okay. I, I like cooking the beef ribs a little bit hotter and quicker. They, uh, we're trying to really get that bark set, render a lot of fat. I want residual heat on the beef ribs at this point. So we get to use almost this whole Semtex. Yeah, this Syntex, we're not afraid to cook on the fourth door on this thing. The only real like no-no spot on this thing is pretty much like right on the edge. Outside of that, you're ready to rock and roll. But you'd see, you know, color set, bark is set, all that pepper is set into the fat there. That's yeah, this that is cold done. smoke does. That's great that you've got it done before you've really started rendering. Yeah, we've gotten probably 80% of our color up to this point. So again, with pork ribs, a lot like brisket, how you set it, it's how they're gonna cook. So we get them on, kind of get all our jagged corners and stuff together as much as we can. And tips towards the firebox, it looks like. I try and keep them, so the Syntex runs a little bit hotter on the wall. So I try and keep the ribs towards the door if I can. Sometimes, every now and then, I may come in and rotate all these ribs. 
because we can get hot on the door sometimes too. Right. It's just kind of something I'm watching throughout the cook for, and if I see this starting to get a little too much color, I'll come in and rotate everything. Yeah, so turkey, I fold over. Try and make it just nice and round. I think it's just a presentation per preference. Again, it's the same principle as everything else. It's just how you set it, it's how it's going to cook. Right. So. All right, so now fire these back up with a different fire than we had last yeah, night? Yeah, so we'll build a little bit different fire today. We'll go a little bit for a smokier fire in the middle scope because we have the briskets on there. We're going to be a little smoky at first on the Syntex just right. to put some smoke on the ribs, and then we're pretty much going to be pretty hot and quick after that. Okay. So are we building a smoky style in the... Yeah, so we're going to go pretty... We're going to build a pretty good-sized fire in both of these. Right. Uh, with the stacks somewhat closed. We're, I'm trying to probably slowly build to 250 over the next hour. Okay. Nice and smoky, get the 250, we'll have her long net takes, hour, hour and a half, 45 minutes, whatever it takes. Cool, we'll just let them do their thing. Hour and a half in, we've gotten basically 250-ish here. Our coal bed's probably burned down, pretty solid here. Ribs are coming along, nothing's getting too dark. We're really just trying to making sure nothing's getting crispy or burnt up at this point. Okay. Beef ribs are starting to get a little sweat on them. Oh, wow. That's a bigger difference than I thought there was going to be. They're really taking that heat well, aren't they? Yeah. Then they're about to get blasted, blasted. So these are going to get really pretty over the next couple hours. All right. I apologize. I'm giddy about the turkey. Can we yeah. see them? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll check in on these guys. You can see that kind of nice orangish color on these from that seasoning salt. Right. Uh, these will become a nice kind of goldenish brown over the next couple hours. I mean, this is crazy. It's pepper, it's seasoned salt, it's smoke, it's heat. Science. <laughs> so we've just checked uh, the ribs, beef ribs, and turkeys and all that. So our first fire, it's, uh, you can see here, we built that about an hour, what, an hour and, hour and a half, half ago. Yeah. That's where we're at now. Nice coal bed, we'll break this down. So we're getting heat, but we're not getting smoke and we want more smoke, right? No, we're getting just a little bit of smoke just because our stack is still fairly shut down there. Right. So at this point, we're just gonna rebuild our fire again. You know, if I want more of a smoky fire, which I still wanna put some smoke on these, I'm gonna go this, this way with my logs mm -hmm. versus running them this way. And I wanna keep them pretty tight to that coal bed. I don't want a big gap underneath that wood. I don't want a ton of airflow just right. sucking through this thing. So uh, so this is important, right? So when we build that fire, when we put the splits going north and south, front to back, we're drawing air in. What we're building right now is side to side, so this is all about limiting the airflow. Yeah, we want to keep yeah. our flames nice and chill. They're going to get a little loud and crazy right here just because we just put these splits on, but right. here in about 10 minutes, once we shut the door, They'll mellow out, they'll chill out. Um, they won't uh, burn anything up. You know, I know Johnny has a video out there talking about fire and he's 100% true in saying, you know, how you build your fire, how fast or slow it is can crisp up those edges on the proteins. Right. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So we want to keep this down. Yeah, keep right. this nice and chill, pretty okay. smoky. Okay. But we'll give it 15, 20 minutes, check back in. If we need to add more, we'll add more to it. And then we'll come check in on the mill scale. Same deal. Big confession: When I'm uh, when I'm at home, I wear those uh, heavy heat gloves because I'm old, a lightweight. Big old puss. Don't be yeah, that. we're too big to be that scared of fire. <laughs> and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna kind of fill that bottom gap here. Kind of just pushing those coals. Okay. Just kind of reduce that gap size to slow that down a little bit. And then we're good. And we're gonna bring this up to about 250 as well. Yeah, it's probably about where it falls. Temperature is not so important right now. It's it's more about we've got a nice coal bed. That coal bed's gonna get us to probably 200 ish. Those uh, five splits there will probably get us to like 250, 275, right. somewhere in there. How important is pit temp as opposed to the amount of smoke we're getting off the fire, amount of airflow? So I look at it in stages. Um, when we put proteins on, stage one is let's get bark set, let's get color set. So I want a nice, smoky, slow fire. Right. Uh, once our bark and color is set, now we're trying to, to actually start cooking the protein. Okay. So that's kind of like that 250 to like 280 range on right. those pits. Now this could differ on the size of the pits, right. obviously. And then uh, the final stage is rendering that, that last bit of rendering 
flat right. part of the stage. The finishing stage to me is 285 to 350. Okay, so, so we're getting in there, getting yeah. hot. And That's that last last couple hours on ribs, last couple hours on briskets, on beef ribs. That's when we're trying to get the heat. We're trying to get right. stuff rendered same out. Same thing on the turkey? Off. Yeah, same thing on turkey. Turkey is kind of one of those deals where because of the pit space we have, um, it kind of just finishes whenever whatever stage we're at. So right. with the other protein, like turkey is important, but the briskets are more important. So right, it'll come off when it comes off. That's o I'm gonna say that's only for people who haven't tasted your turkey. Damn man. <laughs> <laughs> when you're at the top of your game, like pitmasters, like Cooper are, you cook dozens of briskets and pork steaks and turkey breasts and all of this stuff all the time and you learn to look at it and to feel it and to touch it and to know exactly where it is and exactly when it's done but if you're a mortal like me and like you probably are watching these videos you know what we don't have all of those skills developed and so i rely on meter thermometers to help me with knowing where i am in my cook knowing how much time i have left and turning out a perfect product every time i want to thank the folks at meter for sponsoring this video and making it possible for me and the crew to come down here and spend a couple of days in Montgomery, Texas, learning from these folks that are the best. When I go back, I'm gonna try to recreate all of this amazing food, but of course I'm gonna use a meter thermometer or a set of meter thermometers when I do it because I don't have those skills that Cooper has. So if you're like me and you've got some skills and you know what you're doing, but you want it to turn out perfect every time, I recommend that you follow the link that's on the screen, use the coupon code that's down in the description of this video, check out Meter for yourself. Oh, those are pretty. Okay, so we wrap briskets, but you're wrapping turkey. Yep, we've got two of them ready so far, so we can get these wrapped up. Okay. We'll take a, take a turkey breast, we'll put a little bit of that garlic butter on there. Oh yeah. Because everything is better with garlic butter. So the briskets we wrap with uh, tallow, but these are garlic butter. That just, yep. you can just see it dripping down there. We'll flip her over. Right. Get all your edges crimped up. Make sure everything's nice and tight. And there's turkey number one for the day. And that'll go in the warmer. That'll go all in right, the warmer. Can I try one? You go on, get in that one. All right. So on the middle, some liquid goodness. Pour a Paula Deen portion on there for me. Paula Deen, there we go, a little. There you go. Paul Perdome, perfect. Flip it over, wrap her up. Nice and tight so no steam, right? Nice and tight. All right, and this is it to the warmer, right? That's it. Oh boy. Dude, those have evolved just really nicely. This rack here though, I mean, you can just tell how nice and pillowy oh, and soft that is. We'll pull them, wrap them. Let them sit out for about 45 minutes wrapped and then we'll throw them in the warmer for service. All right, we have got one rack ready to rock and roll. Kind of a little bit of a smaller rack, so we got done a little bit early. You can see it's nice and barked up, nice and soft, squishy. Wow. You know, beef rib is my favorite barbecue. I know it's blasphemy in Texas to not say brisket. But... It's brisket on a stick, man. Let's go wrap this up. All right. You'll notice we have a theme. Start with tallow. Yes, sir. So that scoop, scoop looks like about a half a cup kind of thing. I think this is a 10 ounce scoop. Okay. So, so the towel's going underneath. Towel underneath, because this towel is going to melt down in this wrap. These are going the warmer for service today. And then when we pull these out on the block, we'll open these up. That towel will be melted. We'll pour the towel on top of the beef ribs, add that fat and flavor to it. Okay. We're ready to rock and roll. All right, so that towel is not absorbing into the beef rib while it's wrapped. It's just going to mellow out in there and then be ready for at yep. the board. Before then, you know, uh, barbecue to me was a loaded baked potato and a chopped brisket sandwich, you know. It wasn't until, uh, you know, I started helping Cooper with pop-ups that I really started paying attention to like, man, there's there's a lot more to barbecue than, than just that, and, you know, and he did a, uh, he does a very good job of, uh, we both do, it's kind of cut into us from, you know, being in, involved with football coaches our entire life, you know, if we're not good at something, we're gonna figure out why. And he did a really good job, you know, trying to figure that out with barbecue. Okay, so Cooper says that the glaze is the secret to why these ribs are so amazing. Yep. You agree with him? I agree with him, they're glazed pretty good. And he said, you're gonna teach me and them how to make it? 
I'll do my best. All right. So what do we got here from an ingredient standpoint? All right. So I believe what we got here is a single batch of rib glaze. So the first ingredient, um, I do have a process that I like to mix this stuff in order. Okay. Um, because if you don't, you'll get vinegar or wash your sister sauce on you or anything else if you don't mix it right in order. Okay. okay? That, I, by the way, is the best pronunciation <laughs> I've ever heard. And is it okay if I use that? Absolutely. All Absolutely. right. Wash you your it. sister sauce. Right. So the what first step that we go, always go ketchup. All right. uh, and for this uh, single batch, you're going to start out with six cups of ketchup. Okay. Two fiston. I'm it. experienced. You got it. In this one, we have three cups of honey. Now, is there any particular brand of ketchup or brand of honey that you stick to? or Whatever's cheapest. Okay. Good. Whatever's cheapest. I love the simplicity of that with so many of the answers <laughs> that Cooper has given me. Brown sugar is the next step because that's okay. the heaviest ingredient that you're going to have. Okay. Um, and that's going to be uh, two cups of brown sugar. Okay. And that. Try to break it up a little bit. Yep. All and right. the brown sugar is the one, if you do that last, by that time you've got all your other wet ingredients Get in there, and that's the one that's going to splash up and hit you with everything else that uh, you just mix so in there. So that's why we put it in first. Yes, brown okay. sugar. Right, we're not getting any more honey. It's the only right. really dry ingredient um, okay. while you're mixing the wets. We've got uh, two cups of apple cider vinegar. Okay. Two cups of white vinegar. Two cups of mm. water. One cup of wash your sister sauce. Wash your sister sauce. If I've learned anything on this whole trip, <laughs> that might be my favorite one. thing. And then that's uh, two cups of white sugar two right there. Two cups of white sugar. And then after that, uh, we have just our seasonings. We have uh, two tablespoons of black pepper. That's our 16 mesh pepper that we use mesh. for our briskets. We have two tablespoons of cumin. Cumin. Uh, two tablespoons of granulated onion. And two tablespoons of God's seasoning. There you go. All there we go. Right. We'll give that all a good we'll mix. We'll keep the vampires away. That's it. Now this part, you, you really want to get in there on the rib glaze. If you don't right. have an immersion blender, um, just because that honey's the son of a gun, it right. wants to go straight to the bottom. Um, as well as you want to break that brown sugar up too. Okay. Um, so you just give her a good, good mix. It smells amazing. I think I've got as much of the ketchup, uh, except for the corners out of there as there. I can. That's beautiful. So. Get a little yeah, the main thing is just going. make sure that you don't feel okay. any tension on the bottom with the honey or the brown sugar or anything like that. All right, so from a consistency standpoint, this is about right. We want it. Yep, that looks good. Pretty soft, so it's not going to be thick and viscous like a barbecue yeah. sauce. Yeah, so that's, that comes from the two cups of water that we put in there. Well, the reason we probably water it down a little heavier is just because uh, you know when we wrap ribs with these, if you don't water it down, it kind of wants to jellify a little bit. It just right. doesn't look very good. Um, so we water it down, and we actually even cut that a little bit more when we pour it into our bottles. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, just with so water? Yeah, just with water. Like, so we'll take, okay. you know, your regular, you know, squirt bottle, whatever, however much right. those are. Awesome. Hey, thanks for teaching me. You bet. Appreciate it, man. Six hours in, we'll do uh, kind of one of our <laughs> first checks. That's pretty. Pork ribs, got that nice mahogany color on them now. These are done here. We're trying to catch them just when they get start getting a little soft, but not so soft that you could push your finger all the way through. We want to catch them right. just before they break down. Got it. So this isn't gets. about temperature. This is about you can feel the meat. You know it's ready. You can look at it. Yeah, we're looking for that nice kind of just, they look like they're about to break down and kind of feel to them. They're not like just sagging like that. When you Got it. All right. Now it's time to wrap them, right? We're going to wrap them, glaze them. All right. No tallow. No, no tallow butter. this time. No butter. We're just taking our rib glaze we make here in-house. Okay. Put a pretty good heavy coat on there. And get that little money shot with it. Oh, nice. And then we'll flip them and wrap them. So just like uh, we learned at Goldie's, you're doing the same thing. You're not glazing in the smoker. You're letting it develop in the warmer. Yeah, I don't take any chances with possibly uh, burning up sugar and putting an off taste on stuff. So uh, we, we let that rib just sit in there. It's going to be nice and sweet and peppery when, they, when they're done. So Perfect. Okay, so all that food is in the warmer, which means... Uh, we wait, which is not, of course, my favorite part. But Cooper does something kind of cool on Saturday mornings like this. He actually brings around to-go containers of barbecue, little gift for other small business owners here in the community, and it's just part of how he supports folks. These guys are craft coffee. So this is actually where we first kind of really got started in Montgomery. We had our trailer set up right next to these yeah. guys, and we were slinging coffee and barbecue at nine o'clock in the morning on Saturdays. That was a little bit over a year ago. And now, top 25 new barbecue joints in Texas. I'm working on it, yeah. Man's yeah. a superstar. Yeah. 
these are these are our people right here. So we try to support them whenever we can. You always want your kids to be to do something better than what you did. You know, I was telling Cooper the other day. I said, uh, you know, once you have kids, it's not about you anymore. It's about your kids. And uh, same thing when <clears throat> when we had the boys. You know, it's not about me or what I want anymore. It's about what the kids need. And same thing with their kids. I told them, say that, you know, not that you don't matter, but you got Duke and Palmer now. I said that's that's where we need to go. So it's it's about them now. So uh, my audience is carnivores, but I understand that we're gonna bake these cookies with tallow. Yes. So we're including the beef. So beef cookies, so it's safe for carnivore yes. consumption, <laughs> yes. right? All right, so we cake our tallow. I do okay. a cup of the tallow. It's gotta be melted or softened just right. Okay. It can't be over liquefied or un if it's over or under, it'll affect the texture of the cookie. Now, when you guys make your tallow here, you're just rendering the fat. You're mm -hmm. not doing anything special. You're not Nothing seasoning special. it, just yep. rendered fat. Which okay. you can buy tallow at the grocery store, all that. Right. So super easy to get. Right. I'll take my sugar. We got both okay. the brown sugar. Right. And our white sugar. All right, you're using a cup of each. Yep. And that was cup a cup of, of tallow? Uh-huh, cup okay. of tallow cut and a cup of each sugar. Okay. And then we're gonna soften it. With my nice little Amazon mixer. So there you there, go. <laughs> there you go. I made sure I got my pretty color and everything. Okay. Next, we're going to add in two eggs. Like that one fell apart. Okay. All right, and then we're going to take the vanilla. So, okay. I say a tablespoon. It is a very happy helping of a tablespoon. Okay, so we're doing the Paul Prudhomme version of, uh, there we go. And we just mix that all together. All right, once that mix. Now we'll put in all the dry ingredients. So okay. I've already scooped it out, but we've got two cups of flour. I use cake flour on the cookies. Cake flour. Yes, okay. cake flour just makes it a little like the texture softer. I got two cups of oats. Now those are just basic Quaker oats, yep. right? Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. Now we're getting into all of our fun stuff. Okay. So first we can do just baking soda. We're gonna do a teaspoon. Okay. Now is it a generous teaspoon like nope, you with the vanilla, or we're gonna get pretty I close to I scrape it off the edge. Yep. Okay. So we got one teaspoon of baking okay. soda, All right. a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. So cinnamon and coffee. <laughs> this seems to be a theme here. Like we don't need to be fancy no. with the ingredients. We're doing. We're not this a fancy place. <laughs> yeah, but it still tastes amazing, yes. right? So I think the theme of stop overcomplicating things carries over into the into cookies, the cookies too. Yes. Okay. So I do three tablespoons of okay. the coffee. Okay. I just kind of eyeball the cinnamon. And then I think the only ingredient we have left is a bag of uh, fancy imported Belgian chocolate. Yep. So I go ahead chips, and I just right? mix this together okay. and get that all mixed up. And then I'll do the chocolate chips. This was a family right. recipe yeah. in our my Simonton family cookbook. Okay. And it had it called for shortening. And I was like, I could use tallow. Why not? And we tried it out and haven't stopped since. Cooper told me he wanted a good cookie recipe, so I was like, all right, Simon to Family Cookbook, let's find it. There you go. All right, so we've got our dough. It doesn't look like much yet, but nope. I tasted right. it, so I already know how good it's gonna be. All right, the best part, you wanna lick the cookie dough? See, this is how you know she's a mom, because she knows <laughs> these things. Are you okay with that? Yep. That's really good. <laughs> all right, so we're doing ice mm -hmm. cream scoops. Yep. So what's it like? Being in a barbecue restaurant with all the testosterone and everything's about slinging meat, being the mom of the house. I have to hold my own. Yeah. They talk the crap. Do and they, so I have to give it back. Do they listen <laughs> when you tell them? Heck no. No? <laughs> All, All right. right, so we got 22 cookies yep. out of that recipe. Yes. How many will you make for like a Saturday service? Um, so normally I'll just double this. Okay. Yep. All right, so 44 cookies and then your hose. So you better get here early. Yes. Because I know I these are to... gone early. Yes. So now. Now, so we bake them at 350. Okay. For 16 minutes. Okay, so we're just doing these in the oven. Yep. We're not putting and them on the smoker. What would we happen can. if we put them on the smoker? So I put them on the smoker. They do take a little bit longer. It's just there's no room on the smoker for me. Right. <laughs> but okay. I've done it. We put them on there, and they taste fantastic. Because then they have even even more a smokier taste to yeah. them. Um, they do take it a little bit longer because right. obviously the temperature is a little bit different. Right. Um, but if you have a smoker, throw them on there. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So when I do these at home, 
Throw I should, them on there. I should throw them on the smoker. Yes. 350 if I can get the smoker at even yep. 350, 16 minutes. Yep. And then just kind of keep an eye on them. Then you're All right. good. All right. So let's get these in the oven. All right. Yep. All right. There we go. All right. See you in 16 minutes. 16 minutes. Go ahead and open this. There they are. We're just going to bring them over here to rest. So now we'll rest our briskets for a day. How long do these have to rest before we get to eat them? Um, I usually give them at least 10 minutes. Just that way when we scoop them, because I do not overdo cookies. I want the softness. I want the right. little bit of doughy still. Yeah. So we got to let them rest so that you can actually scoop them off with a spatula right. and them not break. So it's right. about 10, 15 minutes at least. Well, I got to tell you, I tasted those ones on the tray this morning and uh, <laughs> pretty special. So thank you so much yes, for sir. teaching me this. Of course. Kind of got him hauled into this thing maybe a little bit. When uh, Coop said, hey, uh, I'll need you to come help me. And I said, well, I don't know much about barbecue. He said, look, here's all I need. People love talking to you. You're good with people. All I want you to do is sit on the front porch. We're going to give out beer. You sit on the front porch and drink beer with people while they're waiting in line. I said, well, shit, I, I'm pretty good at beer. Not a lot of things I'm good at, but I can drink beer and bullshit with anybody. And so that lasted exactly one day. Not even one day. I think it lasted four and a half hours. And the beer was gone, and the line was still there. And I was stammering a little bit. So he said, hey, let's, let's put you at the dish sink for a little while. So uh, after four hours of being a door greeter, uh, I became the dishwasher. So I'm not sure if that was a promotion or demotion, but we have beer lasting longer now, uh, and the dishes are clean, I guess. I, every once in a while, I'm put this out there, because I tell everybody, if you walk in and say, I want a beer with Coach, I get a break. So make sure that gets out there. Just walk in the door and say, I need a beer with Coach, and I'll take a break, go sit and drink a beer with you. All right, so I got two questions. The first one's for you, Cooper. Yep. Do you think that you and your team taught me enough that I can recreate this at home in my backyard. If we didn't, you're always welcome back, buddy. All right, well, geez, maybe I'll mess it up just so that I can come <laughs> back. That might be a good enough invitation, all right. And then the second question is for you, Shelby. You promised me a Cooper story. He's sitting right here. I can't tell too much. I gotta live and work with him. <sighs> all right, I guess, I guess we'll let you off the hook. <laughs> maybe when the cameras stop. I got you. All right, good, all right, so. Uh, should we taste in the same order that we did uh, when I first got here? Guest choice, whatever you want to do, buddy. All right, well, these pork ribs were so good. Mm. Mm. Just the color and the bite and the structure, really something special. And you did it again. I mean, that whole two flavor profile, two distinct flavors, like it's a different rib if I bite it this way than if I bite it this way really really something special uh turkey next to turkey turkey's the biggest surprise i mean you go first i think uh i'm gonna i'm not gonna take a whole piece here because it's a lot you know what i am gonna take a whole Just piece do it. i am go I take go home. yeah i mean like i told you you know other places i'm surprised by everything but i don't eat turkey and and you didn't do anything to this other than what you showed me it's really that simple lots of smoke and lots of butter seasoning Smoke, tuck it under when we smoke it. Yep. Wrap with the garlic butter. Is that a theme? Like I'm starting to see this now. Wrap with fat or wrap with a glaze, and that's that final layer. Is that, that really is what makes this different? It's what makes it how we want to do it. We love fat. We love flavor. We know we're not. I'm not a little person, so. Yeah, and you can see on here that's not over seasoned, but it's full of flavor. I'm going in. Do it. All right. First bite. Jeez, look going? at this. Look at this. This is just silly. All right. <laughs> mm. Again, the cold uh -huh. smoke. 
that's more bark and more smoke than I've ever had on a beef rib, and yet it's still super juicy. It didn't dry out at all during that process. Now it's time to taste Tell the real down. cook. All right, so these are the ones we just made, right? Mm. Yes. You can really taste the tallow. Like, it's different than cooking with butter or shortening. Not that I bake a lot, but you don't get to be my size without eating <laughs> at least one cookie. I think I'm gonna try these in a wood-fired oven. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Shelby, that'll that? be good. Yeah. I think you're gonna need to start making room on the smoker for her, Cooper. We'll I know, they made more room for me. <laughs> it's time for the bigger smoker. I gotta tell you guys, this has been just an amazing experience. It's been an amazing food experience. Getting to know you and your family and your crew has been an amazing experience. And uh, I will be back to Montgomery, Texas, and I will be back to uh, hang out with you guys with or without cameras. I feel like I've made some great friends and I've learned a ton and I appreciate you. We hope you come back. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. All right. And we'll see you next time on Eat More Vegans.